Hi, guys. Well, from very warm Salt Lake City, Utah. It's Thank God I'm Atheist. The podcast. I'm Frank Feldman. Yes, you are. And I'm Dan Beecher. And coming up today, uh, we're going to talk a little about nu- all the nuns. The nuns. Both kinds of nuns. Every kind of nun you can think of. They're coming. But, and, and, yeah. And they got ideas. Uh-huh. And we're going to talk about those. And it's no nonsense. <laughs> In the second half of the show? Nope, because the show just got canceled because of that <laughs> joke. I've canceled the show. Isn't that like a classic stage? Play? Nonsense? Nonsense. Yeah, like a musical? A musical. I think it's the precursor or maybe the postcursor to uh, what's the, what's the, uh, the Whoopi Goldberg film? Oh, Sister Act. Sister Act. They're Delightful the, show. They're the same thing. The, one of the best movies. Nun of comedy. The 20th century. You can't get better than nun comedy. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good stuff. Anyway, Dan, yeah, coming up right now, as we speak, <laughs> live and on tape. <laughs> uh, it turns out, Dan, yeah. you know that there's this whole thing, right? The, the the Christians, conservative Christians, we tend to think that they just don't care about the environment. Well, isn't there this thing? Considering right? the fact that I. I heard a story about, uh, and this was this was a friend of mine, brother-in-law, mm-hmm. said out loud to someone that he actually genuinely believed that environmentalists were trying to kill all humans <laughs> and keep the animals alive. Uh, that that was the stated goal of quote environmentalists. So yeah, the people might be think that that was I a mean, thing. I mean, because I guess this is a, you know, there is a thing in the United States, about 30% of people don't believe in climate change, right? And 42% yeah. don't think that it's human caused. Right. Right. They're wrong. Uh, yeah, yeah, they are. They're terribly wrong. Um, because as this article points out, despite scientific consensus that it is, in fact, both real and largely are doing. Um, turns out, We've been talking about the environment wrong. Well, yes. The it, messaging. It, yeah. It's it, all wrong. It, it worked for us, right? <laughs> us liberals. Oh, us lib- scientists. Us libtards. Yeah. Oh, scientists say this. Mm-hmm. Oh, huh. it's the vast consensus that the planet is going to get too hot for, right. for humans. Science has continually proven that this is what's happening. Exactly. Sure. Right. Uh, well, according to the Yale program on climate change, they they did some research at the at Yale University there. Mm-hmm, I believe so. Okay. Um, the one of the most effective ways to get Christians to care about global warming is to frame it as quote protecting God's creation. Surprise, surprise. Yeah. But this is how, what would finally work. Uh, they did a whole study where they tested different approaches, <clears throat> different. Uh, they, okay. Uh, they they argue they they sort of presented climate ideas uh to conservatives yeah um and by uh, which in this country we of course mean religious people like mm-hmm. to be clear conservatives is not just a <laughs> political group sure, yeah. in conservative in, christians in the united states of I america i didn't fully f- say the whole thing but right. yeah um so this is according to uh, the researchers. Um, since they, they say since about 70% of Americans identify as Christian, and because Christians normally have a huge impact on politics, we saw them as an untapped audience to target <laughs> with think? religious and moral messages. Sure. Um, they, they actually feel that there is sort of a, a, a value amongst Christians um, about sort of caring about not the global environment, but sort of like, you know, the environment, you know, don't right. litter, take care of things, sure. you know, like keep it nice. Sure. Uh, you know, as you do, you, 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 you want to be able to go out and enjoy it. Right. You don't yeah. want it to be disgusting no, when no. you get there. Could you, could you clean up, <laughs> clean up a little bit, please? <laughs> so there is sort of this, this caring about the environment um, amongst Christians, right? The, I, you if wouldn't you call them. So. You wouldn't call them environmentalists. No, but they're, it, it's in the same way that, say, out here uh, with the Great Salt Lake, hmm. the environmentalists figured out that if they teamed up with the conservationists, hmm. meaning the duck hunters, yeah, 
who liked the marshlands to protect the marshlands out there that they could actually do a lot of good for the 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 whole ecosystem of the great salt lake right right and so it's the same kind of thing reach out like there's this conservationist attitude sure right that's that's sort of what i'm getting at well anyway um they found that messages about climate change that emphasized religion such as quote god made humans responsible for taking care of his creation made a much stronger impact on christians than motivational messages without a religious bent um yeah because they can't hear anything that doesn't have (laughs) jesus attached to it i mean it's kind of true they got they got jesus deafness I mean, it's it's one of those things that's sort of a big sort of, well, duh, um, message. It's, yeah, right? it's not a duh, though, because it's confusing to pe- people who have been trained at all in science uh-huh. who then see that this, uh, the vast scientific, scientific consensus says X. It doesn't occur to a lot of us, uh-huh. oh, other people will hear that and see that as a reason to do doubt it rather than a reason to believe it right which they do a right. lot of a lot of these conservative christians mm-hmm. because they've been trained to do that mm-hmm. so yeah you gotta you gotta take the uh the jesus approach whether or not they're they can even hear that depends on which pastor they've been has been screaming in their ear or whatever well and and how much they've paid attention to the right wing media yeah that has already taught them just yeah. stupid nonsense about the environment. Yeah, Fox News will tell you that, you know, they're trying to kill people. Wind turbines are will give you cancer or something. <laughs> no, I believe that's a thing. No, that's uh, President Trump said that. Wait, he did? Yeah, he said he heard that, which makes it true. Which means he heard it on Fox News. Which means. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It's easy enough to to chart that back. I mean, he could have heard that in his head. He could have heard <laughs> literally someone could have made a joke in the West Wing somewhere, and if he was walking by, that's now a fact. Yeah, that's how his brain works. All right, I'm going to take us to Tasmania. Wow, uh, there's been a lot of news coming out of Tasmania lately. Has there? Yeah. Okay. Uh, this one is one of my favorite stories that I've ever reported on. Because it involves two people, a brother and sister, named Fanny and Rembers- Rembertus Beerpoot. Wow. <laughs> okay. I don't know. How, I don't know if I'm even coming close to pronouncing that right. But there you go, Rembertus Beerpoot, <laughs> and what his a beautiful name, Sister Fanny. Uh, they're in some hot water. Over no. there in Australia. No, why? Uh, what? For indeed, they they decided the they had had a moment where they came closer to God. They they realized how they could come closer to God, and they stuck with it. Okay. And the way was to avoid rebelling against God by making sure that they didn't pay taxes. Because mm. taxes are not godly. Um, Render unto Caesar? Shh. Quiet. Uh. Don't uh. read contrarian Bible quotes. <laughs> so they stopped paying their taxes, uh, oh, no. and now they have a judge has now finally ordered them to uh, to pay more than two million Australian dollars. Holy crap! Yeah, they were. They apparently had some had some money. They had some income. What? So they're in some trouble. They they were they were convinced that uh that and and it's interesting because the uh the judge, the justice, I think this was the Supreme Court uh oh. that decided this. Yeah, the really? Supreme Court of Tasmania decided oh, okay. this. Um one of the justices says, "I believe the submissions to be honestly and genuinely held beliefs rather than attempt to avoid tax liabilities." But in my view, the Bible effectively said that civil matters and the law of God operate in two different spheres, which he's right about, but doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> like, yes, the Bible does say render under Caesar that which yeah, is Caesar's. Yeah. But if it didn't say that, guess what? You still have to pay your fucking taxes. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Like, 
I'll write a Bible. If, if I can get away with it, I will write a religious text that says I'm not allowed to pay taxes. Right. I'm pretty sure I could convince the satanic temple to make that a tenet of their <laughs> belief system if I needed to. <clears throat> it wouldn't matter. Right. I'll still go to you jail. You still have to pay your taxes. Yeah. Because even though it's, Caesar's not around anymore, uh, yeah, Inland Revenue and the IRS, they're still existing. <laughs> right. So. Oh, my God. Yeah. Good God. He says, though, or, or the justice yeah. says that, that they believe, right, yeah. that this is sincerely held. Right. But at the same time. Those beer poots. I really. They. they they didn't want to pay their taxes. They came up with a reason. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. Like, you don't just, like, go about your day and go and, 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 and read the Bible or whatever and go, you know what? I'm not going to pay my... T-. It just doesn't... It doesn't follow, right? Right. Yeah, exactly. I, like, it, it doesn't it start, matter. It starts from the point of, I don't want to pay my taxes. Right. How do we how do we make up a reason? I mean, when you look at like religions how they start and whatever, it's a it's fascinating how often what God wants follows <laughs> very hard upon what the leader of that religion wants. Joseph Smith wanted to screw around. It's a polygamy. It's amazing God said polygamy. how how often that happens. <laughs> A religion starts yeah. and suddenly Jesus, God is all about fucking as many people as that guy wants to fuck. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, Dan. Yes. Uh, Amazon.com. Oh, not the river. Um, or uh, uh, you may not know this. Amazing Deals Online. That's what it was originally. That's where Amazon, Amazing Deals Online. Oh, my God. They Can should you be fucking believe ashamed that? Ashamed of themselves. <laughs> Anyway, Amazon yeah. uh, caved in, Dan. Oh, recently. no. Oh, they no. They bent to the will of, of damned fucking liberals. Ugh. You they may do? have heard of this story, this story. Did you hear this part of the story? Maybe. That uh, they pulled uh, oh, some conversion therapy li- books. Yes, I did hear that. Right. Uh, they started with um, the, the books by... Dr. Joseph Nicolosi, yes. who's considered the father of conversion therapy. <laughs> he's cons- um, and he's considered by many young men daddy, but we won't go we won't go down that road. Well, okay. When he's wearing his leather. Okay. But anyway. Um they've also gone on and started pulling other books as well. Uh because they say that they uh, violate their uh terms of, of service. Okay. Right? Um, I mean, con- conversion therapy is a uh, proven not to work. Right, it's completely ineffective, and b super harmful. Super harmful, and also not for nothing illegal in a lot of jurisdictions now. Well, for minors. Well, yeah, good enough. Yeah, right. Yep. Got to keep these books out of the hands of children. Mm-hmm. Nonetheless, Dan. Yeah. Um. Congress is upset. Uh oh, or should I say, a group of House re- Republicans? I was going to say is upset. I can think of some Congress people that are not going to be upset about that. <laughs> uh, they uh, are urging the members of their caucus to pressure Amazon to bring these books back, uh, even though uh, obviously um, this uh, it's it's widely debunked and pseudoscientific and. Um, so forth and so on. Yeah, but it's worked um, so well. Titles for... such as A Parent's Guide to Preventing Homosexuality. Oh my god. Gross. I really kind of want to read that. I actually do want to get my hands on a copy of that. Don't buy it though. I know. I don't if somebody has a copy of that, you can reach out to us. Right. If or, you don't want it anymore. Or we'll uh I mean there's there are libraries, it's probably not there. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. No, this is one where it's gonna take people <laughs> people networking. You just can probably find it online. It's probably been scanned in online. Steal somewhere. it. Anyway, uh, another title: Reparative Therapy of Male Homosexuality. Mm-hmm. Whatever. Anyway, they uh, want to get these books back into uh, into circulation. Frank, you need to be repaired. And they're saying, I know, I know. Um, broken. They're saying that the company is censoring speech. Yes, they are indeed. Well, but aren't there other avenues for selling these books? Yeah. Must they be on Amazon for no. them to be available? 
Well, they, I guarantee you, they're a are privately owned still company. Christian bookstores. A, a private company can sell, can censor any speech they want to in Absolutely. terms of like what they choose to sell and not sell. Absolutely. So yeah, they're censoring your speech. Yeah, good on them. <laughs> Hooray. <laughs> Uh, so this is a statement. Uh, so there was a little pamphlet or a leaflet, a handout, what have you, that was being passed around and given out at the Republican Study Committee. That's the name of this group. Right. Uh, and one of the great lines in the whole thing, I'm just going to read it. Uh, the gay community as suppo- a supposedly oppressed and marginalized group yeah. wields an extravagant amount of power today <laughs> and does so without regard for the rights of anyone who chooses not to support them. <laughs> How long until the most widely read book in the world is banned because it takes a dim view of homosexuality? Oh, meaning the Bible. I, I would like for Let's that ban, to happen. I would love to ban the Bible. I but, would like for that to happen. Boy. Oh, boy. You know, it does speak to the power that Amazon has now. That, that it's almost equivalent to govern, to the government. Like, if they choose not to sell something, suddenly everybody's like, <gasps> not available. Censor! You're censoring! No, they are selling. Yeah. They're choosing what products they want to buy and sell. Yeah. That's a thing that they do. Yeah. That's crazy. I know. They recently stopped carrying this delicious moutard that I just oh. adore. Oh, my God. And I'm just, I I can't seem to get anybody else to care about it, though. Oh, we you need should, you should write, I am outraged. Write to your senator. It's obviously. <laughs> That's what you do. Uh, yeah, the, to the Republicans. No, I'll say, hey, Republican Study Committee. Yeah, if exactly. you'll join forces with me on this mutard. <laughs> exactly. We can talk about the rep- reparative therapy books. <laughs> there is no mutard, people. Uh, there is. <laughs> there. Trust, trust me, there is. He's saying there isn't. Well, well they he... haven't discontinued it. I just kind of... <laughs> I just <laughs> elaborated. <laughs> there's a mutard. It, I knew. A mutard. I there's knew a there was a mutard. It's delicious. It's oh, okay. like, oh, it's just delightful. What do, what do you got? A fig thing going on? Is it? Oh, a... Of course, figs. Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, and uh, <laughs> what's that other one? Yeah. Anyway, uh, <laughs> speaking of books and Christians, mm. a a a very popular Christian bookseller is unfortunately having to change their name. <gasps> Why? Christian book distributors, they're a big deal in the Christian book <laughs> Wait, industry. Where they did with are no longer was... able to use their acronym. <laughs> Do not get ahead of me on this, Franklin. <laughs> I'm sorry. It was very obvious. <laughs> because yes, CBD <laughs> is something else now. <laughs> and that something else is way more popular than oh, they are. Oh no. I feel bad for the people over at Ganja Christian Book. <laughs> Those are the ones I really feel bad. Yeah, CBD oil, uh, f- CBD products, for those who don't know, are a derivative of the marijuana mm. plant. Mm-hmm. Uh, they they don't get you high, theoretically. No, they relax you. But they, uh, they do things for people. Apparently, people like them. Mm-hmm. Uh, people put their dogs on CBD oil. Yeah. And shit. Because anyway, uh, yeah, so that has got... THC, everyone, just an alert. Your dog can't do the THC with your dog. Don't do that. But the CBD, dogs like it. Okay. Uh, it's like catnip. Well, it's not like no, that. It's, it's just not. In, in lieu of doing what we had to do with my dog. <laughs> just put it on every antidepressant and anti-anxiety under the sun. It's on, two, it's on a, a cocktail of two <laughs> at the moment. Yes. Anyway, yes, he's a very, a very nervous Nelly. Very high strung dog. Uh, anyway, yes, the uh, the CBD is just too popular, and Chris, now uh, Christian Book Distributors has had to change their name <laughs> to just Christian Book. Oh no! It's a, it's it's a one word now, Christian Book. Okay. Well, without no. the intercaps, I would have thought the intercap on the on the B, the capitalized B. But they didn't go with that. They just went with Christian book. One huh. word. Interesting. And there are no marijuana products contained therein. None. None. Oh, CB. There you go. All right. Well, Believe me, nothing that they produce will get you high. That is <laughs> faux show. <laughs> oh, Dan. Yes? Oh, ugh. Donald Trump. 
Oh, good. I'm glad we were going to talk uh, about him. Yeah, I know, right? Um, the racist uh, shit from like last week. The, the the tweets, the tweets, and then that rally, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, uh, where people were were chanting, uh, "Send her back!" Right? You know, a reference to uh, what's her name? Not to AOC, but to the no, uh, no, no, to, to Somali. Omar. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyway. Uh, yeah, uh, Ilhan Omar. Yes. Anyway, um, everybody on the left is just incensed, right? I mean, the, 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 there's this. He, it's it's racist. It's obviously racist. Yeah. It's horrifying. Um, I I've heard the media actually get on board with something. Uh, I've never heard the media get on board so unequivocally. With, with anything with the with ra- this president and just right. be like it, yeah it was racist it was awful but anyway uh, in um, fairness to there him, are some people he said that it wasn't racist and he doesn't have a racist <laughs> bone in his body so now, now get this we think that our our outrage about this whole thing uh is exclusive to our whole side of things uh it turns out that there are a bunch of uh um, conservative uh christians who are also upset at the moment <laughs> um and the, the, they're not so much focused on the send her back part of the whole thing i feel like i'm ahead of you on this one but go on uh it, it instead um has to do with the fact that he apparently the media is completely ignoring this completely ignoring this Dan. Oh. apparently he took the lord's name in vain <laughs> i wasn't ahead of you i love it <laughs> what, what did he say he used he said god damned twice oh just horrible think <laughs> of the children can't someone think <laughs> of the children oh my god state senator paul hardesty of west virginia's seventh district which is coal country by the way yeah um wrote trump a letter Oh, saying the, the just terrible choice of words during this the, the whole rally thing. Um, he admits that he is a conservative Democrat, but he supports Trump. What and his pro coal policies? Oh right? God! Of you course. know what? Listen, if you if I don't care if your income and your family's livelihood depends on an issue, that's not how you vote. Yeah, I know. But that's anyway. Yeah, these one uh, issue he, people drive he, me bonkers. He says, "I am, however, appalled by the fact that you ch- that you chose to use the Lord's name in vain on two separate occasions when you went off the prompter during your speech." Oh my he god! He says in his letter, "There is no place in society anywhere, any place, and at any time where that type of language should be used or handled. Your comments were not presidential. That's what that's what it took. Right. That's what finally did it." Your comments, sir, are not presidential. Well, on that... That's it? On that, sir, we can agree. (laughs) However, (laughs) god damn it, that is so stupid, (laughs) I just just can't even bear it. Uh, Apparently, he asked, he asks in the letter, uh, he implores Trump to reflect on his comments, right? Please remember, Mr. President, in the United States of America, in God we trust, not curse. Oh my god, here's the thing. (laughs) You, you, you dolt. <sighs> Grab him by the pussy wasn't yeah. a clue to you. I know. Like, you, do you know who this man is? Have you paid <laughs> any attention at all? Do you have any sense? You're about to learn some stuff from this Epstein thing. Oh, my God. No kidding. If Honestly, if that's what's bothering you, <laughs> you're about to get kicked in the nuts <laughs> by what's coming and you should have been paying attention yeah, this whole time no kidding that's rare, that's crazy i guess other critics of trump's language um they've been a little less polite oh uh one saying he was a goddamn fool <laughs> uh, a commentator on freerepublic.com uh accused the president of blaspheming and mocking god and warned of sure retribution, Dan. He yeah. says, it will not matter if you are a street sweeper or the leader of the greatest republic on earth. God will drop you like a stone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the First, thing. God damned. That, that Let is- me tell you, that person 
hasn't been around people who swear very much. Right. Well, like, that, come on. That, how, how fucking imbecile, like, infantile yeah. is that? Yep. It's so fucking ridiculous. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, if there's one thing that Donald Trump is af- afraid of, it's God dropping him like a stone. <laughs> He's terrified. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm going to tell us of a very odd meeting, mm-hmm. a very odd thing that's happening. Mm-hmm. Um, you've heard the name Russell M. Nelson? Yeah. President and prophet, seer, and revelator of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints? The Mormons. Mm-hmm. Well, he's going to be uh, he's going to be addressing a very interesting group of people uh, coming up this weekend. <laughs> I can't even say it out loud. Uh, Pr- President Nelson will be addressing the 110th annual convention of the NAACP. <laughs> How does that work? It doesn't Oh, it works because this world is built on cognitive dissonance and that's what I'm that's all we get to experience forever uh, and anymore for the rest of our lives. That's the only thing we get is to just be confused by the universe in perpetuity. Uh so okay, so for those that don't remember uh, about the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the cult of which we were both members. Right. Uh Born in, into in our youth, well, you were born into it. I was born into I it. Wasn't, I was sort of born. Into it. You were born into de it. facto born into it with with convert folks. My parent, I was like one when they converted. Yes, essentially. Oh, yeah. okay. So Any, I wasn't really born into. But it. you were you were brought up. But in I it. grew up. You were you were. Uh, I don't remember a time when they weren't right. Exactly. So I there you go. A time when they were cool. <laughs> Before they got fully indoctrinated. Before they got lame. Uh, the lameness is coming, everybody. So, if you'll recall, uh, in our lifetimes, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints had a policy that prevented mm. people of color from... Uh, Specifically black people. Yes. But other colors, too. Really? Yeah. I thought it only extended to black people. What, you think they're going to let Lamanites come and be in the temple? I don't know. No. I thought it was blacks. Anyway. It is blacks, but like, what? how do you define black? Anyway, uh, right. that was a Fine. different question back okay. before the 70s. Uh, anyway, up until 1978, I believe it was, uh, it was black people couldn't have the priesthood. They couldn't go to the temple. These were all the most important uh, sacraments within the Mormon church, and mm-hmm. and they couldn't participate. Right. So... The uh, the NAACP's relationship, this would be the National Association uh, for the Advancement of Colored People, right. for those who don't know. Right. Uh, the largest, probably, uh, association for, non- ra- for anti-racial discrimination in the country, in the, mm-hmm. these United States. Mm-hmm. Uh, they they didn't, didn't used to like the Mormons very no, much. No, of course not. Uh, and it's been tense ever damned since. But last year, on the 40th anniversary of their the Mormons' decision to magnanimously bestow the uh, the, the the powers of the priesthood on little black boys and 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 black men and and get let the women into the temple, uh, they they the the head of the NAACP came to Salt Lake City and met with them and they yeah. had a sort of joint. Uh, you know, declaration of everybody should be nice to everybody, which is ironic because the Mormons are still super dicks to a lot of people. <laughs> However, NAACP, Ugh. apparently, the, apparently they made an impression, and now old Rusty Nelson is going to Detroit. Boy, oh boy. To give them a talking to. It so just the, feels like the strangest thing. Well, it does seem weird that the NAACP, I mean, I don't know. I mean, they are essentially inviting over if nothing else you know a uh, 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 an anti-gay rights organization yeah yeah right that well, doesn't seem cool for a organization that's focused on the expansion of rights for yeah. you know yeah it's to 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 partner up with 
Yeah, that seems I, really gross. Actually, I feel like actually there's they should some, be called out. Some gay that. organizations should be writing letters. Yeah, and and, and but, publishing up. The, the LDS Church is not cool. Like they 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 talk the talk really well. They sound super nice all the time in their press releases and yeah. stuff. Sure. And then and then the issue of homosexuality comes up. And it gets a little uh, not so nice, and they'll they sugarcoat it pretty well. But yeah. like, it's still not nice once you actually read what it all means, right? Yeah, uh, it's appara- a hate group. It, it 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 is a hate group. It is uh, especially the Quorum of the Twelve. Yeah. You know, all those old men they are filled with hate toward gay men. Yeah. I mean, they probably hate lesbians, and lesbians too. too. Sorry, I, I was, I was just, and, but I'm getting up on a little thing here. And Dan. trans people and, also, oh, they definitely don't like trans. They people. hate them real yeah. good. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. The, I mean, that it does seem like it's a it's a something with that the NAACP should find common cause uh, with with the gay rights groups, but you know. They're picking their battles, I guess. This, One of the this, things that they're yeah, going to be announcing. Cool. This is not cool, Dan. Uh, Rusty Nelson will be announcing a plan uh, to, uh, t- I guess, to start a joint education and employment initiative in Chicago, San Francisco, Houston, and Charlotte, North Carolina, which I think is interesting. The Mormons Ooh. are an organized group of people. They are a very... <laughs> Yeah, they're good at it. They're businessy people. Yeah. Uh, and they say that they've got a program that they've tested all over the world and that they think works. So they're implementing it for... They're le- they're, I guess they're just... Uh, but they're opening up some desert industries? I mean, I what are guess, they doing? I don't know. It's, uh, we'll find out when he gives the speech, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, cool. Yeah. Awesome. That's that's really cool. Yeah, I'm excited about that. Let's see what happens. It, yeah, uh, nothing but ba- I'm, but good things. I'm on the edge of my seat. Yeah, I, I'll tell you this much. Hmm? You know who's who's singing songs of joy right now? Gladys Knight, the most famous Black Mormon there is. Yeah, there and you that, go. She couldn't convert any of the pips though. <laughs> They're all still. <laughs> All right. Okay, well, Dan, if people want to join in the conversation, how do they do it? You can go to, uh, what are we on? The, the Thank God I'm Atheist. Uh-huh. Uh, so that's so you. Podcast. Can, yeah. At Thank Hang God on. I'm, I'm getting there. Com is I'm the email address. getting there. I was going to go to, I was going to send them to the form on the website. No? No. <laughs> okay. Go to, yeah. write to us, podcast at Thank God I'm Atheist.com. Or call and leave us a voicemail message, 424-666-8442. Go to the Facebook page, facebook.com slash TGI Atheist, and click on that like button. We do not have Instagram. <laughs> and while you're there, search for the TGIA members only lounge. Request to join. It's a closed group, but we will let you in. Yes, sir. Dan. Yeah. Whoa. Yes. Dan. Hi. Danny. Hey, Danny. I mean, I guess you could. I don't know. (laughs) Uh, Here's a voice that hasn't been on the show for a while. Glenn Beck. Woo. Glenn. Uh, Yeah. Motherfucking Beck. We haven't heard that Mormon jerk off for a while. (laughs) Well, he was, you know, I mean, he was crazy. Yeah. And then he went crazy. Then he went genuinely nude. Then there was this moment where he started making sense. A little bit. Like a little, like not. Not every sentence, but there was there was the occasional sentence where you were like, "Okay, it's alarming enough if it happens at all." Yeah, and you're like, "Okay, he's not completely deranged. What's going on here?" And then he, and then after that, it's like they just like put a bag over his head and shuffled him off somewhere, and yeah, we're like knock some sense back into him so that he's truly crazy again he's been he's been a prisoner in alex jones's basement for the last <laughs> oh god three years what a horrible place <laughs> it was just, just oh god just him and a bunch of gay frogs <laughs> the weirdest that? sex dungeon ever alex jones's just... <laughs> gay frog thing anyway. yeah i know i know, I know. Yeah, yeah. all right okay well dan yeah uh he opened his mouth this week great has some things to say about america Something's coming. And, uh, Something's coming. And so why don't we just listen in? Yeah. So I told uh, Tim two months ago, a uh, month ago, I don't know when I told you, um, that 
uh, I was going to do something uh, big, uh, a restoring event next summer. And I have felt strongly that it is supposed to be a renewal of the covenant. Uh, and you immediately, and I said to you, I think you need to be there. You need to at least be on the the board, if you will, to help shape it because we have to do it exactly right. We have to repeat Washington and Lincoln. We have to do it right. Um, and we as a people need to gather together and do it. So next summer, we're going to do it. Um, there's a lot of stuff that has to happen in between to be able to get there. Um, but we as a people can renew the covenant, correct? Because it is about us. It's the people. It's the people, absolutely. Um, are we the only com- country besides Israel, right, that has the covenant? Um, and yeah, I believe so. I mean, th- th- these are two promised lands. There's, there's only nations I know of that rolled out that, literally rolled out that way. Right. Evidence, historical evidence, and they, covenant land. And the pilgrims, they left Holland because uh, not, you know, I'm sure they'll make it someday about tulip allergies, but they, they actually <laughs> left because it was not a a blessed land, right? It was not a coveted Land. They left because God told them in their solemn assembly, go to that land and make of it a covenant land. I have a work to do there. That's why they mm. went there. So anyway, th- this is the thing. I, w- I would just ask that you would uh, you'd keep your calendar clear um, for summer next year. And you plan on spending your vacation uh, with uh, with us or at least a few days of your vacation. And, and hopefully this fall I will be able to have enough lockdown where I'll be able to tell you where we're going to be. Uh, I have distinct ideas, but I don't want to uh, share until we have it all locked down. Uh, but keep your plan open for next year. Uh, I'm going to say uh, the Tropicana in Las Vegas. That's oh, uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm thinking Bible Belt. I'm <clears throat> thinking a Carolina. I'm thinking, <sighs> may, oh, Hilton Head. Maybe it's Hilton Head. Oh, Hilton Head. <laughs> it's so lovely. Oh my. <laughs> um or the he, he'll he'll be in Jackson County, Missouri. Oh. If he's Ooh. self-fashioning himself. Yeah. Let me tell you something. So what he's talking about, I guess. <laughs> he's got these as best as we can tell. Is it, this Tim guy Ooh. has these books about like the covenant, one Ooh. nation under God and the covenant, Lincoln and the war. Uh, which basically say that the covenant. The, basically say that the uh, the pilgrims and he mentioned Washington and Lincoln they all made a covenant with God <gasps> and that's how America is so great and <laughs> it's been lapsed it's lapsed it's not it's the covenant might it like look you got to renew these things every so often yeah God is a forgetful God our My God God is, is a forgetful God yeah exactly. But um, Israel has this too? I guess so. It's pretty neat. But it's just us. Just us and the them. Club of two. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, you look at it. You're, you're not going to... What are you... Is Korea going to be covenanting? No. They're not going to do that. They don't know how. <laughs> God. Canada? You wish. Right. You wish. You're lucky because well, you're I, next I think, to us. I think the, the, their, uh, the charter... <laughs> the, what, what do they call it? The, the, their the national charter. Yeah. I think it prohibits it. I think it's against it. Yeah. It's against it. Exactly. You know. Exactly. Australia had the option. They declined. They, you know. They respectfully declined. <laughs> <laughs> we would covenant, covenant, with, covenant with you, mate, but unfortunately, we, uh, we, we don't want it. That was, more, that was more New Zealand, I think, than I Australia. Think it was, yeah. Anyway. Huh. That's too bad. Sorry, Dad. guys. God, you blew it. Oh, man. All the Aussies are going to be so mad. Me- like- meanwhile, there's a bunch of Kiwis going, that doesn't sound like us either. <laughs> I've just pissed everybody off. <laughs> oh, oh, speaking of people uh, who are going to, who are pissed off and are going to write into us, uh, we have some folks uh, who have, who have sent missives, who have, mm. oh, and even, and even, uh, even a voice of a, a voice. We have a voice. Uh, so, so why don't you play that? I will. Um, this is a, this is a voice we've heard before. Um, 
But um, let's see. Actually, it's just a funny story. So uh, let's just let's hear what he has to say. Yeah. Hi, guys. This is Donnie in Mount Shasta, California, and I just had the most fascinating experience. I've been out of the church since I was 18, which was, oh, 1998 or so. And my boyfriend, who was not raised in the church, was just kind of cracking jokes and talking about how he wanted me to get him garments. And for a moment, I felt completely offended and angry by that. That's how deep the programming runs, is because I don't give a shit about garments. I call them magic underwear and think they're a joke. But I got angry when he talked about getting some. And I just thought that was a really interesting reaction for somebody who's been out of the church for over 20 years. Anyway, love the podcast. Have a good day. Well, it makes perfect sense to me. It's our stupid shit, not his stupid shit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. We can make fun of it all we want. It is so funny to there me, are... though. I, I, I know lots of people who left the church. Mm-hmm. Look, especially if you went through the Mormon temple. Mm-hmm. What he's talking about, if, if, in case you don't know, the, what, the Mormons call them temple garments. They are the magic underwear. The yeah. Mormons, yeah. All, the, all the Mormons who have been through the temple mm-hmm. ha- have to wear for the rest of their lives. Right. It is one kind of, you get one kind of underwear. That's the end of your underwear mm-hmm. choosing for the rest of yeah. your life. Uh, and I, but like the temple's such a mind fuck for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. That, and it's so like, like, it is impressed on you. You cannot overstate how much they say that it is the most sacred thing in the universe. <laughs> and those that fucking underwear, that ugly fucking underwear, is the most important thing you can imagine. I re- I remember when I took it off. Was what it a, a momentous a moment? Like, and I well, I I chose to do it very of course like very unceremoniously mm-hmm. right because i i didn't want it i was sort of rejecting the power that it had over me so right. it was just like i just took it off right. right and then it hung out in the drawer for a while and then um and then there was just this one day where i was just like cleaning up and i was like i just put it all in like a grocery bag tied it up and just took it out to the dumpster in the apartment complex I lived in and just tossed them in. Yeah. Because, I it, again, it was just this, like, I just need to reject... I, I need to throw these away in a way that a Mormon never would. Right. Because, you know, because, because these like, are so important that, like, Mormons are told that they have to cut out their, mm-hmm. their little symbols that are just sewn into it. Yeah. You have to cut those out, and then you have to burn them. Some, some people think you have to burn them. <laughs> you destroy them. You have to destroy them. You have to so cut them into pieces. Cut them into pieces. A lot of people will do. To, to get rid of them. Like, yeah. like there's a, they just do a really good job of making you feel like you got to... Like, this is really important stuff. So, I know lots of people who left the church... Uh-huh. And for the longest time, either kept wearing them uh-huh. or didn't wear them, but kept them uh-huh. and didn't feel like they could get rid of them. Yeah. And it was, it is a huge deal when a Mormon actually throws away their garments. Yeah. And some, even some people who have left the church for long since still do the cutting out and the yeah, cutting it that, all up. And that I, I refused. I refused yeah. to do that. I was like, no, this isn't, it's fake. It's when, An- when Andrea left the church, I like... She was because she was still sort of half in when when she and I started dating, right? And she was uh, so when it came time for her to get rid of them, she was like, "Well, what should I do?" And I was like, "You can just throw them away. Throw them away. It's all you have to do." It's and it feels liberating when you do it, that right? Way. So I know pl- it's not. I don't see how it would be liberating to follow their rules. No, right? Like you're just getting rid of them at that point. Yeah, like. It's liberating. You to could just you, you could burn them. Ignore the rules entirely. You could burn them, sort of in effigy. For sure, your own why thing. not? Yeah, or whatever. But not not the whole little cut out the symbols right. and do that nonsense. So just if you were going to just burn them all, great, fine, whatever. Douse them in kerosene and go nuts, right? Right. But like, you know, yeah. So anyway, I I Back can to sympathize. Thing. I can sympathize with that caller because that is because like a lot of people, it's like it's just ingrained in you. It's hard to get that out, even when you are far removed from it all. Well, he says that he left the church when he was like 18. He didn't even go through the temple. Most like, I it's know. doubtful that he would have. It's possible, but it's pro- possible not only if he'd been planning on going on a mission. Here, listen, right. What was the caller's name? Donnie. Listen, Donnie, 
Try and get your boyfriend a pair of the garments. Might just be kind of fun. Just do it. It'll right. be fun. You could you could have some fun, sexy times with that. I, I watched a whole Vice about about uh, Mormon kink. Uh, it was yeah, it was garment porn. Yeah, and so this reporter goes and she like goes to a filming of a scene. Oh, where there's like and she kind of participates a little. She what? puts on some garments. What? And, yeah, I mean it doesn't get too racy, yeah. but it's like it's really funny and. It's presented get, very, see if you can get some. They're yeah. not easy to get. You can't just get them. No, but there are places that you can get like fake, good fake ones. I yeah, think, because people do kind of get off on it. Yeah, it's yeah. true. What, uh, you know what? You you fuck it with people's minds too much, they're gonna start getting the kinks. <laughs> it's gonna start happening. <laughs> All right, here we had uh, Caitlin wrote into us. Hey Frank and Dan, I love the show, and I wanted to write you guys to say thank you. I've been struggling with my mental illness lately. And you guys are helping keep me afloat. Oh. Every time I think I may not want to live anymore, I can hear you guys talking about how life is worth getting every experience I can out of it because I won't get another. Also, you've helped me to become much less of an angry atheist. So thank you. Uh, I wish I had the money to help support the show. You guys are amazing. Oh. Well, thank you, Caitlin. Yeah. See, everybody, some people actually think we're important. Oh, Jesus, Dan. <laughs> Just kidding. Oh, Caitlin. No, uh, definitely, definitely. Uh, we, I love that. We and really I, appreciate that. And, and keep whatever help you're getting, keep getting it. Yeah. Yeah. So. And, 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 and it is true. Like, you get one shot at this damn thing. Yeah. See, see what you can do with it. Yeah. Have some fun. Try yeah. some stuff. Get out there. Who knows? <laughs> uh, Leo wrote into us, uh, hey, Frank and Dan, I've been a listener to the show for about a quarter of a year now. Uh, bef- for background, I'm a bisexual 16 year old kid and currently live in a very rural part of a very conservative state. Okay. Uh, I'm very open about my sexuality and more open about my atheism. So slurs get thrown my way a lot, uh, at my school by a large diverse band of rednecks and Bible thumpers <laughs> on the subject of comebacks to homophobes. Do you remember we had that talk oh, yeah, yeah, uh, a yeah, few yeah, weeks yeah. back? Um, I have always I have one that always works. If somebody says you're a faggot, I say, "Okay." And and I smile. <laughs> it helps point out that they're calling me gay is redundant and foolish and leaves them completely blank uh for a comeback. Uh they usually just stand there dumbfounded or or and or walk off. Another common one for me is tell me something I don't know or yeah, no shit. Yep. Which both serve the same purpose. Uh so I just thought I'd contribute to the conversation. Anyway, all right. Yeah, keep up, keep up the good work. He says. Yeah. Well, you do the same, Leo. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Don't let the haters get you down. It it gets better. Yeah. They they say so. They say. Yeah. Once you get out of high school, leave. Maybe. Oh my God. Maybe leave that state. You could. You can do They're, better. You know. Or go to a city. Go to a city. Go to a city. Get, get, most most states have cities. Get thee to a city, <laughs> young man. <laughs> Not all of them. There's a chance. No, this one has some good cities. Yeah. So, all right. yeah. Cool. All right. Uh, well, uh, hey, listen, Franklin. Yes. We're so close to a goal. Oh, it's true. And I need people to understand this. Uh, we, we're, not, we're not there yet, mm. but we are achingly close to getting rid of... Half the ad, so half the episodes would no longer have ads. Oh, we're gonna go episode by episode, episode by episode. Okay, so so we're so close to getting rid of half of the ads. Yeah, on our show. Yeah, because our goal, our stated goal, we're trying to get through this is to get enough uh, listeners supporting us that we are entirely listener supported mm-hmm. and can get rid of the ads altogether. Yeah, uh, but until we do that. We got to run the ads. Yeah. So we're achingly close to getting rid of half of our ads. Mm-hmm. Uh, we just need some more people to step up to the plate. Uh, we've kind of maxed out all the people who were like already going to, you know, they were just <laughs> thinking about it. They're, they just hadn't gotten around to it. They needed a good little push. They, they just needed that extra push. Those guys are already in. <laughs> so now the rest of you need to start thinking differently. Uh, uh, oh, God dang. <laughs> <laughs> Look, if you haven't been considering it, just consider it. 
That's just almost, try it on. See just, how it feels. Yeah, wear yeah. it around a little bit. Just in the house. No yeah. one can, no one needs to see. No. And then if you feel like it, you can give a little bit of money to us. Uh, all you have to do Easy. is go to thankgodimatheist.com. Mm-hmm. Click on that support. Uh, there's a there's a banner on the right-hand side of the, of the website. Oh, yeah. You just click on that. It takes you straight to our Patreon page, and you just join up. Uh, do we have some folks we need to thank who have we, done just that? Yeah, we do, in fact. Uh, we have four new supporters this week. Mm. Uh, four new patrons, as Patreon as it, calls them. Yes, and indeed. We, you know, they are patrons of the show. They are. Um, so we have two new faithful listeners. These are people who are giving a dollar an episode. Okay. We have Kyle and Lee. So Bravo. Thank you to the both of you. And then we have two new venerable listeners. Ooh. Brooke and Sp. Oh, Sp. I'm so excited for you. Sp, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you, guys. And Brooke. Thank you so much. Yeah. That's, we, we that's really, really nice of you. We really appreciate the uh, the support, and yeah. we're getting so close. So. We're getting really close. Um, we, we just feel like being listener supported, wholly listener supported. No more ads, no more any of all that stuff. Um, it just it's lets, just the way to go. It just lets us do what we want to do without having to bother you with, you know, and we don't have control over who the ads are yeah. from, and we just... Yeah. So, so it's, yes, it's just, it's just better all around. So Ooh, if we can do it before the election season really ramps up, we can avoid <laughs> what happened last election season when we ran, when we, not we, no, but, but uh, we the had place Trump program ads ran running Trump on ads on our show. Oh, my God. It's a delightful waste of money for the Trump campaign, but still we'd prefer not to have that happen again. <laughs> anyway. Um, oh, I'm sorry. There was actually, there were actually five. There's uh, oh. a third venerable listener. Wendy, the wonderful Atlantic Canuck. Oh! Um, so thank you, Wendy. And then, is it, always... Is that a Nova Scotiaite, do you think? Mm-hmm. A Prince Edward Islander? I don't know. Um, and as always, yeah. our top dog, Ooh. our lord and savior, Woo-hoo. Hannah! Long may she wave, forever may she reign. <laughs> Hannah is the lord and savior. Amen. Amen. Oh, Frank. Dan. You know who makes me happy? None of the people. Nuns make me happy. The the growing group of nuns, the N-O-N-E-S. N-O-N-E-S, the nuns, uh, they, these, those are the people who have no religion right. when asked by pollsters. The largest denomination in the land. Yes, indeed. Which is like, impressive. Like over 20% of Americans. Yeah. And much higher in other lands. Yes. Um, there was a very cute uh, article in the RNS, that's the Religion News Service, this week, about nuns and nuns. <laughs> that's N-U-N-S. So uh, apparently there are groups forming uh, are sort of all over the country. What? Of... Millennial nuns, people who are who have no religious preference, mm-hmm. and Catholic nuns, <laughs> old ladies <laughs> who have devoted themselves to Christ. This is so bizarre. Having little meetups. Bizarre. Little tea, little meetup. And I just, this you know, is, I it's just, just the weirdest thing. I, I honestly don't. You told me that this was a thing. Yeah. And I'm just like, what? Why? Yeah. How? Nuns and Nuns is one group. Uh, there's also another group called Sisters and Seekers. Uh, I don't here, like that one. Yeah, Seekers? Like, yeah. Gross. Seeking what? Anyway, the point seems to be, at least for some of these, that the uh, that they just find, uh, inter- they have interesting conversation, and they learn from each other. They have like a little pachakacha. A little... Uh, yeah. <laughs> sure. A little Ted... Little TEDx, TEDx sort of thing. It's more of a TED Y. Yeah, probably. exactly. Um, and I, it got me thinking. Here's what it got me thinking about. I've often thought that uh, that there need to be more bridges built between the believing community and the non-believing community. I know. I don't. I just. I just don't see <laughs> any reason why we like. 
we're such like the groups are such enemies right now. Oh, but I don't want to, Dan. I mean, I agree with you, but I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> okay. <laughs> don't make me. Please but don't make me. Dan. Just, I mean, okay. There are plenty of religious folk that I'm not going to sit down in a room with, of course, and have a conversation right. with. Just like there are plenty of atheist folk that I don't want to have a conversation <laughs> with. Like, it's just the majority of humanity. It's, really it's, like, just, probably, it's just people. There's just that's, probably that's, that's, 60% honest, of these shitholes I just don't need to be a part of. Good God. But look, there are good, caring people <laughs> in religion. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and they here's the thing. We need... They have stuff to offer us. It's not like we have it all figured out. And we have stuff to offer them. And they they don't have it all figured out in spite of what they may think. <laughs> and it's just a matter of, like, we need to be building bridges now more than ever, especially in these United States of America, when everything is... Well, the infrastructure is just it's, crumbling. <laughs> just, if we could get these groups together and I was, I was rebuild thinking. some bridges, really. I mean, that's... <laughs> Wow, it took you a minute to get to it. I got I finally I hear you. Okay. Here's a joke about Sorry. bridges, everybody. Sorry. Uh but but yeah, I mean it's just like uh we need less division in this country. Mm -hmm. And as long as everybody's able to demonize the other side, not good things are going to continue to happen. Right. Demonization is the enemy. Yeah. Uh, it's it's when you lose the sight of the humanity of the people that you're talking about mm -hmm. that you have fallen into bad thinking. Mm -hmm. And so, and I see this on our side as much as I see it on their side. Like, mm -hmm. yes, I definitely, you know, we report weekly on uh, on a on Christian people who demonize atheists as the worst people in the world. Blah 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 blah. And we are. We, in fairness to them. We are pure evil. It's true. <laughs> On the flip side, I see so many atheists in, in like Facebook forums and whatever yeah. who are like, I would never talk to a Christian. Oh, I fucking hate them. They're the worst and blah, blah, blah. And I get it. There's mm. good reason. They've been treated badly in the past. I get that. But who's been the the the. Oh, the atheists, atheists have been treated, have poorly been treated by badly Christians. by Christians. Yeah, fair enough. Plenty. Yeah. It happens all the time. Yeah. That's not all Christians, though. I know. But, I mean, there is the whole thing of, like, I get this, like, creep out factor mm. from Christians most of the time. Like, I just, ooh, I just don't, oh, shut up. Oh, well, stop it. Here's the thing. Stop being so Christian-y, you know? <laughs> like... <laughs> Like I don't, I know. I okay. You, here's you are sounding so dangerously razor thin, close to. I just get a bad feeling in my heart. <laughs> I just get a dark feeling in my bosom when I'm around Dan, them. It's, it's how I was raised. <laughs> it is how you were raised, <laughs> and you need to get rid of it. I can be creeped out by things without it giving. It, does, it doesn't give me a dark pit in my stomach. They. They yeah. Give me the, the, the heebie-jeebies. Yeah, well, I just think, here's the thing. As long as we avoid them and they avoid us, I know. We're, not, we're not going to be able to make any headway in terms of like... And to be fair, the ones that creep me out aren't the ones who would want to come to something like correct. this. Correct. Absolutely right? correct. Like Because like a smart, uh, open-minded, kind, good person... That's I'm 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 on board with that. Right. Right. It's the it's the ones who have ulterior motives. Yeah, exactly. Like, and and you'd be able to sniff that out so fast. Oh, like, yeah. The, the, the guy who shows up to this because he's really more about converting than having than getting to know people or and, arguing. Yeah. Anybody who just shows up because they're going to show you what right how wrong you are. That's not what this is. That's not what this is. Right. Right. So, I mean, in in these groups and these nuns and nuns groups, mm -hmm. it's about they take sort of cosmology and religiosity off the table. Mm -hmm. It's not what their subject matter is. What do they talk about? Knitting? I don't know. 
Uh, I don't know what nuns have in the world that they can actually talk about. Uh, but I think, but I, I mean, I think they still talk about human, human things. They talk about humanity and they talk about, you know, the troubles facing society right. and that sort of thing. Um, but they do it. They try to find common ground. Yeah. Okay. And I think that that's a very useful and, and super important exercise. Right. So I just wanted to bring it up just because, you know, I feel like. And believe me, you know, you try and start one of these groups just wholesale, you're you're going to run into some resistance. Yeah. On both sides. It's almost like the, there does it needs to be something organic. It needs to come out of something some organic. Right. You happen to, you know, live next door to a nun or something, I don't know. Well, and this does, you know, the you, this story follows uh, a a young woman who like met some nuns at a protest or whatever, right. and she, you know, she sort of established a relationship there, and, right. and and this grew out of something. Right. But, I mean, you could also just start a uh, Building Bridges meetup group or something. You could. You yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. I just think that that's a cool idea. And I, yeah. think that, I think that learning from each other and, you know, bringing together people of multiple faiths and no, and no faith and I just... I know someone who went to one of those. Yeah. Well, there was the Interfaith Roundtable. Sure. The Salt Lake Interfaith Roundtable is what okay. it was called. I don't know if that still exists. I don't know, and I don't know who was on the roundtable. Yeah. But anyway, you were... But but like, yeah, these things do exist, and they right. traditionally exist. And the more that... We, I mean, the more that but we can... atheists tend not... They tend not to have a lot of space for secular. Right. And that's the other thing, is that right. we're not being brought to their table. Right. So that's bring good. them the, to ours. Yeah, good idea. You know what I mean? Like... If we're not being included in these conversations, we need to be. We're we're a big sector of this society, and we need to be included in these discussions. Right. And fostering those relationships is a good way to start that that yeah. process. Yeah, 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 there you go. So uh, don't right. be a dick to them. Right. And uh, and don't let them be a dick to you. Okay. And get go. out there in the world and uh, and and have some conversation. That's call all. Call a nun. Call up a nun. Go call a nun. Get in your local telephone directory. Go to Look convents. Up nuns. Yeah. yeah, and then to, or just you know knock on the door, and just be like, "Hey, you got a nun for me to talk to? Looking for a nun." <laughs> I don't I'm, think that's the thing. I'm a different kind of nun. We're yeah. supposed to talk. I've got. A, I, I've I, gotten. I read this article. I think it's really cool. I've got an article here. Yeah, I, I printed it. So that's proof. There you go. Hey, quit, quit, quit closing the door in my face. So, hey, hey, <laughs> you're not allowed to do that. <laughs> Anyway, uh, there you go. Hey, if you guys have ever participated in something like this, or if you think that uh, we are way off the mark, especially me, you mm. can write to us. Mm. Podcast at thankgodimatheist.com is the way to do that. Or call and leave a voicemail message. The yeah. telephone number is 424-666-8442. Go to the Facebook page, facebook.com slash Atheist. Click the like button. Enjoy the content. And if you do enjoy it, Search for the TGIA Members Only Lounge, request to join, and then you get to interact with others. Yeah, that's on Facebook, too. You just yeah. go to Facebook, you type in TGIA Members Only Lounge. And yeah, there you go. There you go. Speaking of Facebook, thanks so much to Mackenzie for all of her hard work on the on the page. Thanks to Danny and Amy for moderating the Members Only Lounge. And a big thanks goes out to the, big, to the Red Rock Hot Club for the use of their music and to Gordon Johnston for the use of his music. And thanks to all of ye for tuning in. Bye-bye.